not just one child, not just one brother, not just two brothers, but three brothers because of killings. Trevor Monoville, I don't know whether the people I am from the 70s and 80s, would know how he was wrapped up by the police, put in intensive care, and when he came out of Brixton, he was found dead. Well, Timmy has been fighting for his family, and he only lives here today for me. And he got stopped and searched only recently. I want to tell him exactly what happened. But worse than that, when the family organized their campaign to find justice, guess what the police did? They spied on the family. They actually used a unit called Special Demonstration Squad, hosted in this building, and spied on protest peaceful groups. They spied on the Loras family, they spied on any other family, they spied on the Jeffrey Squad, they spied on me and the Morris group, and they spied on this family. Please give him a big, big welcome. very hard to talk about personal family things you know but um, I believe that everybody needs to kind of understand from a personal perspective that racism is very much alive in this country. Racism is something that is a uh, it's not easy to deal with especially if you have memories of maybe your best friend being um, Caucasian growing up in their household um, playing games computer games with them eating beans and toast for the first time kind of understanding their culture from a young age and accepting them for who they are and now you grow up you start to realize that a lot has changed you know um, like Sharice said I don't live too far from this vicinity uh, me and my friend were stopped about maybe 200 yards down this road about three weeks ago based on high crime rate area uh, affluent area and um, we look suspicious driving an Audi S3 18 play okay okay um, I didn't mention obviously why I live to the officers because they don't need to know that at the time um, I was a passenger in the situation however we were still pulled out of the vehicle um, my friend was then handcuffed without any reasons we were being intimidated for actually using our camera phones to protect ourselves in that situation um, the officer that came to the scene was second guessing, never gave us the benefit of the doubt, hence why I refused to even tell her where I lived, because it's like, it's pointless, you know. Um, we were treated like suspects, that we were guilty without committing any crimes. They then said that the vehicle was stopped a couple of days before in East London. My friend actually lives in East London, got family from East London, so it's understandable why he'll be in that area. Cool. Now, um, it's about 2 a.m. in the morning, we're coming back from a petrol station not too far from this um, location. And um, the units have stopped us and they've said to us, yeah, you know, um, the car's been stopped before. So to cut the long story short, they suspect him to be a drug dealer. Now, my friend, he um, had herbal drugs, self-made herbal drugs, you know, um, plastics that dissolve on impact. You can use your own teas or whatever kind of bark or herbal essence that you can, you know, compose. So he had that. Thank you. From that, they basically handcuffed him and said, oh, he might run off. They searched the car, ripped the car apart in front of me. And then when they found the actual herbal drugs, they decided to let us go. But we were telling them from the offset, we don't do drugs. We don't do that. I mean, it, there is no need for that. Um, more units pulled up, pulled me out of the car because obviously I had my camera phone out. Um, when they started to realize that I was an educated individual, you know, I had um, more sense than they anticipated, they started to become even more standoffish. They then took my ID without my permission, um, stopped and searched me without my permission, without any reasonable grounds, kept on saying that the officer that initially made contact with us has already given us the reason. But she never. She was just repeating that um, the car has been stopped in East London. But she never gave us a direct reason as to why we've been stopped on the embankment. Other than it's a high crime rate area, it's very rich and there's no cameras on this strip. 
We need to speak to the council. So you're stopping us because you guys don't have sufficient cameras on your street. Okay, but well, you got cameras outside the Bank of England. Yeah? Alright. I'm going to go into something different now because um, I need to touch on a different basis here. Now, obviously, um, I've lost three brothers in under 20 years in this country due to murders. Um, one mistaken identity, one is in a home invasion gone wrong, and the other is suspected murder by we know who. Now, obviously, we've had no justice in these three cases. My brother Joseph Burke Bonneville was shot in Hendry Road, Hackney Clapton, they call it the Murder Mile, and um, he's never been affiliated with any gangs, went to Nigeria for six years because of the gang and the gang violence that was uprising um, very early in, I think, 2006. And um, obviously for the fear of young black lives, my mum decided to take them back to Africa, put them in a boarding school, you know, give them a right kick up the old behind and get them to do something constructive when they come back to this country, which they did. They came back, they joined um, um, London Met University, forensic science students, top of the class, also taking on lectures on behalf of the lecturer himself because they knew more about forensics than the actual lecturer. Okay, so these are top boys, not gang affiliated. My brother was murdered, mistaken identity. Straight away the police treated our family as though we were gang affiliated from the offset. Now obviously um, we had an inquest and um, they said there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute the perpetrators who they actually caught initially and they did re they, they, they uh, assured the family that everything was going smoothly we had um, a lot of uh, a lot of you know um, trying to tell us that things are going to be okay that they've got them everything's fine and then on the day of trial they dropped the case the perpetrators are probably going to sue them as well you understand? So this is the madness that we're dealing with here is that they don't give a damn. If you're black, they don't give a damn. They call it black on black crime. Okay? But it's funny because the guys that were there, because the survivors in that situation saw behind their bad carvers the ethnicity of these people. They weren't all black. And the latest killing of my older brother David Bello Monoville, okay, from the um, attempted home invasion gone wrong on the 14th of June, sorry, the 19th of June, um, 2019. Um, first and foremost, police were the first to pull up on the scene rather than the ambulance when my brother was bleeding out. Okay? My mum had blood on her top, she arrived on the scene. She saw everything happen. The killer actually pleaded with my mum, Auntie, please, don't let them kill me. The killer didn't know that that was my brother's mum on the scene. Okay? Now the perpetrators obviously behind bars at the moment are waiting trial. They keep pushing the trial because of COVID, which is understandable. However, we feel like we need to get justice right about now. Not just for Trevor, not just for Joseph, but for my brother David Bellamonovan as well. And I know we will get that justice. Now, obviously the police have got a lot to figure out in terms of being a part of our community. As a service or force, whatever they want to call themselves. Okay? But they need to start to understand that we do not appreciate their mentality. We don't appreciate their psychology and how they're putting it on us. Now, obviously I grew up in Hackney. And because of being a victim of crime, I moved to Kingston-upon-Thames, the Royal Borough. Okay? At the age of 18, I'm 35. I was a manager for Kingstonian FC, semi-professional rhyming league football club, who actually share the ground right now with Chelsea ladies. Kings, uh, uh, AFC Wimbledon, sorry, who have now left and gone back to their former ground. I was stopped and searched right outside of my former ground, just walking past my ground. And um, it took a friend of mine, a white boy called Dan, who I used to play on the Saturdays with after I finished playing semi-pro football. And he's a taxi driver. He drove past the ground and said to the officer, leave him alone, that's my friend Tim. He's a good guy. He's not one of them. The officer said, let's finish off this search in the back of the van. 
I refused. I said, you've already started a process on the street. You've embarrassed me outside my club. So I'm not going in your van. You know, I felt so many, many times that, you know, give the police a chance, because when you need them, we call them. We don't need the police. We need education.